Welcome back to Barbecue and Bottles, and today we're going to be doing one of Gordon Ramsay's signature dishes, the Beef Wellington. Now this dish, if you execute it perfectly, is a really nice balance of protein and carbs. You've got ultra tender protein being the tenderloin itself, and you've got that crispy, crunchy exterior from the puff pastry. So if you're into that kind of thing, stick around. So this video, it's gonna be long. So I wanted to provide this table of contents here just so that you can skip ahead in the video if you only wanna see part of it, or if you wanna refer back to parts of it, you can just go directly there. So in this section of the video, we're gonna talk about breaking down a full tenderloin. Now, if you want, you can skip this step if you just go to your butcher and ask for a Chateaubriand. That's the middle section of the tenderloin, and that's really what we're looking for. Now we prefer to get the full tenderloin like this and break it down ourselves. It's going to be a lot cheaper, but if you're a millionaire and you just got money to burn, go ahead and get the Chateaubriand and skip. So with this beef tenderloin, this cost us about $110, or so that's about $80 American. And this was about six and a half pounds. So we're getting a lot of tenderloin meat for that price. And this tenderloin, it's made up of three different sections here. So there's the chain, which is a little separate piece, and we'll show you how to pull that off. There's the main tenderloin in the middle, and then there's this head piece. So let's get into the breakdown. So now we're breaking apart the tenderloin here, and you'll see this chain piece is, it's really a distinct muscle, and you can pull it apart with your hands here. It just comes right off. There's a little bit of silver skin that will hold the chain together with the main tenderloin, but you can pretty much just pull that right off like this. So you'll see that pretty much came clean off as we pulled it. Now this, you can just save this. It's great for stir fries, it's great for burger chuck, but we're not gonna use it for our beef wellington. So now you'll see when we remove the chain, it unveiled a bunch of silver skin here and we're gonna need to take that off. So to take that off, just get yourself a really nice flexible boning knife. So we're just using this one here. So what you want to do is get your knife in under the silver skin like that. And you want to just slide your knife down the tenderloin. And this is fairly easy. Your knife just comes down here, sliding under the silver skin to remove it. Perfect, just like that. Now we've got some more down here, some here as well. So we'll do this a couple of times. So the reason we're removing the silver skin is unlike the fat here, that's not going to render down over the course of a cook. So we just want to carve that off. So now we're just going to remove the head here. And again, you can see these natural seams that exist in the tenderloin. So you can just pull it apart. Do the same on the other side. Perfect. So we've got the center of the tenderloin removed from the chain and the head. Now we're just going to carve off some of this fat. And you'll see there's a bit of a theme throughout all these steps here where we're trying to eliminate moisture from the protein and from the inside of the pastry just so that it doesn't get soggy. So now that we've got all the silver skin trimmed off and the fat trimmed off of this guy, what we're looking to do is take out the middle section of this tenderloin. And that middle section is the part that's most even and that's really important to this cook. So we're gonna make sure that we slice down through here, just like that. And then same with this end here. So that's perfect. We've got the Chateau Brion right here. Really nice and even piece of beef tenderloin. And this is the part that's gonna form our beef wellington. Now with these other parts of the tenderloin, you can just cut those up and form some small fillets. These are gonna be really tender steaks. Each of those is probably, I don't know, four to six ounces. They'd be a perfect serving size. Now, similarly with the head of the chain, you can just slice this into some thicker fillets. Just look at the marbling on some of these guys. You don't wanna to be tossing this out. You've gotta use every part of the tenderloin because there's beautiful cuts throughout. So we've got this all butchered up here. And as you can see, the Chateau Briand, and this is really the queen of all of the cuts within the tenderloin. Looking beautiful there. Then we have a number of filet mignon cuts that we've been able to get off. 
which were really the pieces of the meat next to the Chateau Briand. Then we've got some cubed up pieces, which is great for stewing. And then we've got strips from the chain. That's great for stir fry. So we're gonna vac seal everything here but the Chateau Briand, and then we'll be on to the next step. So that wraps up the section for breaking down your tenderloin. You've got your Chateau Briand. We've vac sealed four little fillets that we got off of that. We've got some beef chunks for stewing and then some strips for stir fry as well. So you should give yourself a pat on the back for saving a bunch of dollars and doing that butcher work yourself. So now we're just gonna give a quick sear to the Chateau Briand and that's gonna bring some richness and flavor. It's not gonna add any texture because this is gonna be steamed in the beef wellington, but it'll bring out that nice flavor profile. So first step in seasoning, just cover your cut in a neutral oil. We're using avocado oil here. It's got a high smoke point, so we don't have to worry about it burning. So now we're just gonna go in with some flaky salt. And we're using Maldon salt that's actually got a light smoke flavor to it. So we're bringing in some of the outdoor barbecue flavors just by using a flavored salt. And now we'll add a little bit of pepper to this as well. There, we've got this beautifully seasoned up. Now we'll get the ends seasoned as well with just a little bit of the excess left on the board. So we're just gonna get the oven turned on here. Get our cast iron pan down. And we'll get this warmed up so that we can sear off that Chateau Briand. So we've got this pan ripping hot. We're just gonna drop in our Chateau Briand on this side and we'll press it up against the edge of the pan and that way we'll get browning on the bottom and we'll get a little bit of browning on the side here as well. So we're not looking to cook the Chateau Briand at this point. All we're looking to do is create a brown crust on the exterior. The cooking will be done later on in this process when the beef wellington's in the oven. And you don't need to add butter to this. We oiled the steak and so that's gonna prevent it from sticking to the side of the pan. So let's check out the crust here. See that kind of browning? That's what we're looking for. So I'll just turn it slightly and do that on all of the sides. Oh, it already smells wonderful. And then once we've got all the sides, we want to get the edges as well. So now that we just finished searing up this Chateau Briand, we're gonna brush it with a little bit of English mustard here. You do this while it's still hot, and as it cools down, that mustard is gonna absorb into the beef. And just add another layer of flavor for this cook. Perfect, now we're just gonna put this into the fridge and let it cool down. In the meantime, we'll move on to the duck cell. Now the beef wellington is all about layers and the layer that's gonna go immediately around the Chateau Briand is the duck cell, which is primarily a mushroom based paste that we're gonna create out of two and a half pounds of mushrooms. We've got four large shallots here and then we've got five cloves of garlic. So we have two and a half pounds of mini bell mushrooms that we've just washed, taken the little stems or roots out of. Now we wanna get this down into really small pieces so that it can caramelize when we sear it off in the pan with the shallots and the garlic. So that's why we're using the food processor. So we'll just get this on. So ideally, you're getting your paste down to about that level of fineness. And that's gonna allow it to really crisp up when we fry it later in the, in the cast iron pan and get all the water and other moisture out of here. Perfect, just like that. That's what you're looking for. So the garlic, we'll just get this ready to go into a press. Just a quick cut off of the end and then smash it down with your knife. And now for our shallots, we're just gonna dice these. So we'll take off the outer layer and then dice these to go in with the garlic in the pan. So for the shallot, just like an onion, so you'll want to cut down lengthwise just like this. Then cut in horizontally a couple of times. 
careful with your fingers. Now it's really easy to dice up. Perfect. So we'll do that with the rest of these guys and then fire up the pan. And we're just gonna get the same cast iron pan on that we used to sear off the Chateau Brio. We'll get some butter in the pan, get that melted down, and then we'll sear off the shallots and the garlic before you bring in the mushrooms to reduce. And you'll see we didn't actually clean the cast iron pan. We want all that flavoring from the Chateau Brion in the bottom of the pan just to add some more flavor to our duck cell. So now that butter's melted, we're just gonna get in the shallots. Get those browning. And now for the garlic. Perfect. Now we'll just let that brown before we add in our mushrooms. Oh, you can just smell this. It's absolutely wonderful. And now that we've got that browned up, we're just gonna go in with our mushroom paste. This is really gonna reduce the heat of the pan. We've got this on a medium heat at the moment, but there's just so much water in mushroom. And that's really what we're trying to do here is just remove all of that moisture from the mushroom. If you don't reduce this down far enough, that's how you'll end up with soggy pastry at the end. And you can see just how much water is coming out of the mushrooms here. And we're just trying to evaporate this off as we simmer this. This is already reduced down significantly. We've probably got about half of the water out of this, but there's still a way to go. So now we're just gonna add in some thyme for flavor. For the last part of the simmer here, you should just smell this. It's absolutely incredible. The thyme, the garlic, the steak, mushrooms. This is just gonna concentrate down into an absolute umami flavor bomb. Now you can see we've taken out almost all of the water. We're starting to get a little bit of the mushroom just adhering to the base of the pan. So what we're gonna do just to deglaze this is add a little bit of Lagavulin. So there's people on the channel that complain we don't have enough bottles given our names barbecue and bottles. So here we go. And Lagavulin, for those of you that don't know, is a really peaty scotch. So we're bringing in some of that smoke flavor from the barbecue as well. Oh, that adds a wonderful peatiness to this. So we'll just let the final amount of water here evaporate and then we're done with our duck cell. And of course, right here at the end, we're gonna season this as well. Just go in with a little bit more of that smoked fleur de sel, the flaky salt, and we'll get that stirred in. So you can see here, we've been just allowing this to simmer away for about 15 to 20 minutes, probably closer to 20 minutes. And we've gotten down to the texture that we're looking for for our duck cell. Just look at that. So now we're just gonna take this out of the pan and we'll stick it in the fridge until it cools down. Perfect, so we've taken two and a half pounds of mushrooms down to that. It's unbelievable how much moisture there is in these mushrooms. And I wanna emphasize just how important this step is. This beef tenderloin recipe takes a long time. And so if you don't get all the moisture out of your mushrooms, you could quite easily ruin the entire cook. So now the duck cells had time to cool down to room temperature. It's time to start building our beef wellington. So the first step is just to make sure we're orienting ourselves based off of the size of our Chateau Brion. So we're gonna lay down some prosciutto strips. And we're just laying these prosciutto strips down onto cling wrap. And that's gonna allow us to roll the prosciutto round our Chateau Brion right at the end. Now the trick here is overlapping enough so that your prosciutto is the same length as the circumference of your Chateau Brion. Now we're just gonna take it, some of our duck cell, add that into the middle here, just pat this down into a thin layer. Wow, you can really smell the lag of woolen that we used in that. Now we just wanna check that we have enough duck cell on this. So if you just take your tenderloin and pretend you're rolling it up, we get to about there. So we still have a little ways to go, a little more duck cell to add. 
And you might have thought we were making too much of this duck cell with two and a half pounds worth of mushrooms, but you can just see how much this is concentrated down. All right, now we'll get the beef right in the middle and now we roll. So to roll, you just grab one edge of your cling film. You wanna roll that that way. And then grab the other edge and bring that all together. You wanna grab the edges here or the sides just so that we can make a tight little roll out of this. And what's really critical at this stage you want the evenness all the way across your whole beef wellington to be symmetrical. If you've got a football and it's thick in the middle, just make sure you even that out because you're going to want this to cook evenly once we wrap it in the pastry. There, so we've been able to grab onto the edges. And we'll just spin it like this and that really helps tighten this up. All right, so we've got our beef tenderloin wrapped in the duck cell and the parma. So now we're going to put this in the fridge for at least 15 minutes just to firm up. So now we're in the final step of assembly here for our Wellington, and that's the pastry piece. So we've just floured a board, we've got some puff pastry ready to go. We're just gonna get this flattened out. And it's important to be using puff pastry here, not phyllo pastry or anything else, because this is what's gonna puff up and give it that really nice, crusty, crunchy exterior. And you wanna be working your pastry while it's cold. As it heats up, then you're really gonna lose that texture of the pastry. And you wanna be careful that you're not too close to a hot oven or anything that's just gonna warm up your pastry quickly. So now we're just gonna quickly transfer our pastry to some cling film. Got that back up here on our board. We'll bring our lovely Wellington log back out. So we're just gonna place our Wellington down right in the middle and we want the base of the Wellington to be pointed upward because as we fold in the pastry here, the seam's gonna be in the middle and we want that to be on the bottom of the Wellington. So now we're gonna make a simple egg wash and that's just one egg yolk and then a tablespoon of water. So just run the yolk through your hand and the white of the egg will disappear. Perfect. You know what, just to be safe and to make sure we've got enough of this, we're gonna do two. So these were relatively small egg yolks, so I'm still just gonna use one tablespoon of water. All right, add that in. And now we'll mix that up. Now for the egg wash, we're just gonna brush that along the outside edges of the pastry. And this is just gonna help it stick as we fold the pastry around the beef wellington. So I'll fold that up just like this. I'll do the same on the other side. Perfect, meets right in the middle. Now you just wanna pinch that together a little bit. We'll roll it over. And then fold the edges down the side. Now, if you've got a little bit of excess pastry on the end, just chop that off like that. We'll do the same on the other side. Just a little excess, keep the rest pinched together. And now, just like we did before, we're gonna wrap this tightly in cling wrap and then pull on the edges and just spin the Wellington until this really starts to firm up and make a nice tight ball. But again, you wanna keep this really even. You don't wanna be making a football. You want the same thickness all the way across the Wellington. So now we've got this prepared. We're just gonna put it in the fridge. We'll let this cool down again and have the per pastry firm up. And then we'll bring it back out, get the lattice on here and stick it in the oven. So now we're gonna make our lattice. We've got another piece of puff pastry out. So we're just gonna roll this out. Now this is an optional step. You can just add egg wash to the exterior of your beef wellington as it is, and just bake it up like that. But this adds just a little bit extra. This lattice is gonna form a beautiful pattern on the outside of the beef wellington, and it's gonna look absolutely incredible. 
So we've got one of these lattice cutters and we'll put a link down in the description below if you're interested. This is a very specific tool, so it's only good for lattices for pastry like this. But if you're gonna make a decent amount of beef wellington, it's totally worth it. So as you roll this across, it just cuts lattice into the dough. So at this point, we're gonna to start to preheat the oven. So we're gonna be doing the beef wellington at 400 Fahrenheit, and that's about 203 degrees Celsius. So we've just trimmed off the excess pastry from our lattice, set that aside. So now we're just gonna try and separate this. Sometimes you need to use a little bit of a knife to get down in there for the separations, just to create the, those diamond hash marks that are so characteristic of great lattice work. So we're now just separating out the lattice. You wanna get it nice and spaced out just like that. Make sure it's good and even. Now that our lattice is ready, the beef wellingtons had enough time to cool down in the fridge. So we'll get this out. We're gonna put it onto a baking tray wrapped with parchment paper or lined with parchment paper rather. So now we go in with egg wash, brush this whole thing with egg wash. And this is what's gonna give it that really beautiful golden brown color. So make sure you're not missing any spots and you get solid coverage across your entire pastry. All right, at this point, we need to slide our lattice into position. So we're just gonna take the lattice and go right over the top, pull those pieces down so that they meet in the edges. So the end pieces, you'll just wanna merge those together, kinda crimp them together with your hand as best that you can. That's looking pretty good. We'll do the same down at this end. We'll just crimp the pieces of the lattice together. Look at that. Now, we'll go in with a quick brush of the egg wash on the lattice. Now you don't want too much of the egg wash on the lattice, otherwise it will pool in the little holes that are lying between this piece of pastry and the one underneath. But you wanna get enough that it'll be golden brown as well. So it looks like we have a little bit of excess lattice here on the bottom. So we're just gonna use a knife to remove that. And perfect, our oven just hit temp. So before we stick this in the oven, we're just gonna get a temp probe right into the middle of our Wellington. We're gonna be heating this until we get an internal of 128 to 130, which will be a nice medium rare for us. So let's pop this in, we're ready to go. So let's get this into the oven. So that's gonna be in the oven now for roughly 30 minutes, and again, until we hit an internal of 128 to 130. We're just gonna make a quick pan sauce and that'll be to serve with the beef wellington at the end. So all we've done is we put two cups of chicken broth in a saucepan. We've got it over medium high heat and we're just gonna reduce this down and then I'll show you the next step. So we've had the sauce simmering away. It's reduced by about half down to about a cup. So at this point, we're gonna add in some butter. We're just gonna go in with four of these sized cubes and let that continue to reduce down and incorporate the butter into that. And we're gonna incorporate a little bit of balsamic vinegar in here as well, just for color and that umami flavor profile as it condenses down as well. That balsamic will also bring just a little bit of sweetness to the sauce. So we've got the sauce down at this kind of consistency and just look how rich that color is. Now, I'd highly recommend you just taste a little bit. So let this cool down on the spoon and then just try that. Mmm, ooh, that's good. If it's concentrated enough, then you're done. If you want it to keep going, just keep simmering it away. But for us, we've evaporated off at least a cup worth of liquid, probably a cup and a quarter, maybe a bit more. And that was the right level of concentration for us. We've just hit an internal of 130 here, so it's time to pull it out of the oven. So now, what we've been waiting for, carving in. Yeah. 
Now for this, I'd really recommend that you use a serrated knife like this guy. Again, I'll put a link in the description below, but any serrated bread knife, it'll allow you to cut through the crispy crust without tearing. So now, the money shot. Beautiful. Look at that. Perfect medium rare. Now when you're carving into this, you want to be cutting reasonably thick slices, probably about an inch to an inch and a quarter thick. Now we're just going to add on a little flaky salt on top of that. Get a little thyme garnish on the side of the plate. Now we'll come in with a little bit of our pan sauce. Got a piece here with a good amount of the actual tenderloin, the duck cell, the prosciutto, the puff pastry. And now there's just one less last thing to do, and that's give it a taste test. Mmm. That beef is just so tender, it melts in your mouth. Really, really beautiful cut when you use the Chateau Briand. Excellent. The duck cell. It's just luxurious, super smooth, reduced down to a really nice paste. You can even taste the smokiness from the leg of woolen that we added in there to deglaze the pan. I'm not tasting much of the prosciutto, but the puff pastry, my gosh, that is super, super crispy. And it just pairs wonderfully with the richness of the beef. And then that pan sauce, really enjoyed that reduction. The sweetness from the balsamics coming through, I've got to dig in and take another bite here. Mmm. That is just phenomenal. It's a lot of work to get to this point, but the end product is absolutely phenomenal. Looks incredible on the plate as well. Really pleased with this outcome. So if you like this video, consider giving it a like. And if you think we've earned it, consider subscribing to the channel for more of these videos to come. Thanks for tuning in.